Hello, everyone. Uh, i give a few seconds for the stream to actually be up and running here. Uh, greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade Live. And I am getting in on uh, something really ambitious here. I kind of decided to do this at the spur of the moment. Well, sort of. I've been thinking about it for weeks. But I just decided a few days ago, take the plunge, get it started. Um, as I mentioned in last week's stream, I been uh, having trouble regaining my enthusiasm for YouTubing, so I'm hoping uh, one of the goals of doing this is uh, hopefully I will be re-energized and, uh, uh, you know, be able to get back my mojo, as it were. Uh, but yes, I am going to be showing you my, hey Derek, I am going to be showing you my entire CD collection. Yes, and for those of you who know me well, you, you know that's kind of a holy crap uh, idea, because I own... I don't have a precise count, but I own about 2,800 CDs. So uh, obviously, needless to say, I won't be doing this in one single video uh, because I calculated, um, I just I did the rough math, and if I were to show you every single CD and didn't show it for more than 10 seconds each and without stopping, it would take eight hours for me to go through my collection. So I'm not doing a stream, a continuous eight-hour stream because... Well, I'm I'm human and I need rest, or my brain will explode and it'll get all get all over the camera lens. Anyway, uh, but yes, I, I did a CD collection video sort of uh, back when I started my channel, but it was kind of it was really kind of rough and uh, I just kind of scanned over all the shelves, just kind of showing you what my CD collection looked like in a broad stroke sense. I didn't really go through. I think I mentioned a few of the titles, but I didn't really go through them in nauseatingly exacting detail, which is what I'm going to do here. Um, yes, I've got, um, as you might have seen in the thumbnail, I've got two of these racks, each of which store about, well, they hold about 50 CDs. I've got about 45 in them each. So in each video, I will do 90 CDs. I figured that was a nice, uh, compact enough uh, uh, bite-sized chunks of the video. So it's going to take, what, 20-something installments to do my entire collection. Um, so yeah, and I'm, I'm going to go through them relatively quickly. I'm going to try and keep each video to no more than an hour, but I wanted to lay out a little intro here to show you what's, uh, give you the gist of what's going on here. Um, hopefully by showing you a, a, a couple of goals with this is I've always wanted to explain how I organize my CDs. Obviously with 2,800 of them, of them, I have to organize them alphabetically or I wouldn't find anything. But as you will see through the course of me doing these CDs, you will notice that the majority of the CDs, uh, the stuff that isn't holiday CDs or compilations or soundtracks, that kind of stuff, is all just separated into two groups. The stuff that is all or mostly vocals and the stuff that is all or mostly instrumental. So yes, you will see rock, country, blues, soul, hip hop, what little hip hop I have, is all intermingled, intermingled together. Uh, providing they have mostly vocals. And uh, um, similarly, the instrumental stuff, I've got classical, new age, uh, instrumental jazz all lumped together. So it's kind of interesting, kind of fun, because I don't really um, like to go by genres. You know, I, genre definitions, classifications, like you would find in a record store, really don't mean much to me. I listen to a little bit of everything, as you will see. And uh, so, yeah, I kind of group my CDs accordingly. I just kind of throw them on the wall and see what sticks, uh, which which in a way I guess is accurate because what doesn't stick on the wall comes down and I end up trading in at record stores. So, And you will see some of the stuff, even a couple of the things you saw in my year-end uh, albums of the year list a couple months ago, you might find out are missing here. And that's because I just kind of, I did a major CD pruning uh, just in the last few weeks. I actually got rid of 150 CDs. And yes, I still have 2,800 CDs. I, I think I do. Another thing that I, is going to probably hopefully come out of this is, since I plan to do exactly 90 CDs in each video, I'm going to hopefully come up with a more accurate count of what I have. Except as I go through this, I might actually end up getting rid of CDs, so that might throw the count off. But anyway, long story short, um, I hope this. I think this is going to be a lot of fun for me. Hopefully, it'll be a lot of fun for you guys to watch. And I don't know about you, but one thing that I like to watch on YouTube, even though my enthusiasm for watching YouTube videos in general has kind of gone down, as you know, right along with my enthusiasm for making YouTube videos, one thing that I never get tired of is watching other people's CD collection videos. I just you know, uh, 
recipe and cooking videos are what they colloquially call food. I won't say the word out loud just in case there are filters that are gonna, that are gonna block my video or something. So for me, CD collection videos are music. So, you know, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let me take a drink first. After that, uh, <clears throat> hopefully not too long-winded description. Uh, but yes, I'm going to show you all everything that I have, um, guilty and not so guilty pleasures and all. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'll, I'll try to limit myself to like 20 or 30 seconds for each CD. Uh, I figure, you know, 90 CDs, that'll be about 45 minutes, plus the five and a half minutes I've taken here. So here we go. First up is a British boy band that was around in the uh, at the beginning of the 2000s called A1. And this is their sophomore album, The A-List. And this one, I got to tell you, is right up there with um, InSync's No Strings Attached, Backstreet Boys Millennium, but it was never released in the States. So, but if it had been, I think it would have, I mean, the songs are that good. It would have gone right up there. Um, let's see. Same Old Brand New You is a, a great, great song. One of the great uh, breakup songs I've ever heard. Um, no More is another great uh, kind of a, a out of love song, I guess. But they also did a cover of A1's, or of uh, AHA's Take On Me. Probably the best, one of the best covers of any song that I've ever heard is A1's version of Take On Me. It's fantastic. And up next is their follow-up album from that, their third album, Make It Good. This one was released in the States in, uh, it was in kind of an EP format, an abbreviated version of it, but this is the full, full-length full album, uh, UK version. And the guys lost a little something with this one. They went a bit more of an adult contemporary route. That's not really an accurate description, but uh, yeah, kind of like how, um, I don't know how many of you will get this reference, but uh, Westlife, when they did, you know, or, or actually uh, Take That is a better example. You know, in the beginning, back in the 90s, when they started, they had the much more boy band pop dancey stuff. But when they came back in the mid 2000s, they had a bit more of an adult contemporary grown up sound. That's kind of what they tried with that album, but it didn't quite work. Uh, I, I like it enough to keep it, but still. And they put out a couple albums after that, and they were okay. And then this one you might have seen in a uh, bargain bag video a few months ago, absolutely ABC, the greatest hits collection of the 80s pop group ABC. Great, great stuff on there. Uh, Poison Arrow and The Look of Love are two of their biggest hits. Uh, you probably have heard those at some point. And another bargain bag CD I have is Abena. And she's kind of like Sade, uh, the, the uh, well, here we go again, adult contemporary, uh, mixed with R&B kind of sound, like that stuff. And then we have one of my not-so-guilty pleasures, the 18s. Yes, they, they started, I, I do not have their first album, which was basically uh, a, an album of ABBA covers. And yeah, that was kind of their, their start. And I'm kind of surprised they didn't get pigeonholed and completely disappear after that. Because doing a covers album of, you know, basically essentially a tribute album to all, all to one band is a really risky thing to do for your first album. But this this is just a fantastic and another one, maybe not quite as good as A1, but some great, great pop tunes. This one was released in a different format in the States. Uh, it got it was their most successful in the States. It got some recognition. It was it was pretty good, but uh, I think it could have done so much better. Upside Down, uh, Halfway Around the World are two great songs on here. Uh, and it's, I, I could name the entire track listing on this one. It's just fantastic. And then we have their follow-up album, New Arrival. Even though this was this was like their fourth album, they called it New Arrival. I'm not sure why. But uh, yeah, good stuff on here. They do a cover of Alice Cooper's School's Out, which is a bit odd for some... Uh, uh, pop group to do, but they actually featured Alice Cooper himself on this remake of it. And another very weird cover that they did was One Night in Bangkok, which was basically about a uh, a bachelor on the, uh, presumably a bachelor, on a rather uh, salacious night out in uh, um, basically looking for hookers in Bangkok. So the lyrics don't... Uh, exclusively explicitly allude to that but still just the kind of the general idea of the song again very odd for a pop band to do that but yeah. i guess that was one song that was pop enough and successful enough back in the 80s that the subtext of the lyrics kind of over um was overshadowed by the popularity of the song yeah. 
And then we have, speaking of 18s, we have ABBA, number ones, a, a single disc greatest hits collection. I kind of want to upgrade this to one of the two disc hits uh, sets that I've seen out and about. Um, don't like them quite enough to want to collect every album of theirs. And then we're going back to the 80s. Yeah, late 80s. Paula Abdul, Forever Your Girl. One of the best pop albums of the 80s. Flat out. Period. Case closed. Great, great stuff. Then we have a uh, singer, a female singer who was popular in the French version of the Idol franchise. You will find out in this collection that I've got quite a few international Idol singers, as well as plenty of American Idol ones. Uh, Miriam Abel is her name, and uh, she was, I believe, the winner of one of the seasons. I don't have it uh, handy. I should have. Oh. This would be a lot of homework to make myself notes on everything that's in my collection, so forgive the notes. You've got the internet. You can look it up. Uh, so yes, that was her first album, La Vie Devant Toi, My Life Before You, and her um, sophomore album, Qui Je Suis, Who I Am. She does great stuff here. Um, she does a cover of Ain't Nobody, which I cannot remember who did that. It was an, it was an R&B hit in the late 80s, early 90s. Good stuff. And then we have, uh, speaking of idols, we have an American Idol finalist, Casey Abrams. I liked this guy the moment I saw him. He has he had such good talent. And unfortunately, he didn't make it higher than, what was it, sixth, I think, in his year. Uh, but yeah, good stuff. Um, that was one that I kind of waffled on whether or not I wanted to keep it because I don't listen to it terribly often. But it's like, you know, I kind of want to keep my idol collection as intact as I can. You know? And then we have, uh, you'll see this guy's, the group that this guy was from later on. But uh, this is a guy named Abs. Um, oh, his last name is Breen. I can't, uh, Richard, I think is his first name, Breen. Uh, he was a member of a British R&B hip hop flavored boy band called Five. And this is, this is his solo album, the first, yeah, the first solo album to come from that group. And yeah, he's got a lot of hip hop in here. He was one of the rappers. Oh, Shaka Khan. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Um, yeah, he was one of the two rappers in Five, and again, Five is, I'll, I'll go into them later, but it's like, I don't care much for hip-hop, but Five is one of my favorite boy bands of all time. Go figure. But yes, good stuff, um, and this is actually the Japanese edition with the Obi Strip. This is what I do with the Obi Strips from my Japanese CDs, um, if, when I buy them, if they still have them. Then we have, back to the 90s again, we have Ace of Bass, their first album, The Sign. Again, classic, classic dance pop from the 90s. Yes, 1992, 93. And their sophomore album, The Bridge. Love Ace Space. And then a few minutes ago, uh, with the first group I mentioned, A1, Ben Adams was a member of A1. Actually is. They kind of, they reformed several years ago and did a few albums. Didn't care much for those albums. But uh, yes, he was going to put out an album, but unfortunately this was the first of only two singles, or this might have even been his only single, and his, I don't know if his record contract fell apart or what happened, but unfortunately he never put out a full length album. Very sad. Then we're getting into some rock from the 70s and 80s and so forth. Aerosmith, we have their uh, debut album, self-titled, and their third album, Toys in the Attic. And I had uh, a fair chunk of their discography, uh, consecutive albums, but some of them just didn't really interest me like their sophomore album. And uh, then the next album that I have of theirs is one, several ones after that, Get a Grip. I guess, um, Living on the Edge, I love that one. And uh, Line Up, because it was heard in, an Ace, in the Ace Ventura Pet Detective movie. Yes, I, I have an interesting musical taste, I'll, I'll, I'll admit. And then the next album of Aerosmith that I have is Just Push Play, because the title track is awesome. Love that song. Uh, some people would like the censored version more than the uh, uh, Not Fit for Radio version. And then we have their, their most recent studio album, I believe, uh, Music from Another Dimension. Good stuff. Uh, Carrie Underwood, Underwood, of all people, guests on one song on here. Yes, Street Jesus is one of the best songs off this album. And I think this album got um, was underrated. Uh, is better than the critics let on, I think. Uh, let's see, what else? What's the other one? Um, 
yeah, Street Jesus was good. Oh, Lover a Lot. I like that one. Probably not one of the critics' favorites, but I really enjoy that one. And then we have the one and only CD I have by Christina Aguilera, Stripped. Uh, this has the song Beautiful on it, which is one of my favorite songs of all time. One of those great um, self-affirmation songs. I love those songs. And then on we go into another American Idol, Clay Aiken. I have his uh, debut album here, Measure of a Man, as well as his soft, sophomore album, uh, A Thousand Different Ways. Di yeah. A Thousand Different Ways. Yes, I can speak. Uh, this is uh, mostly a covers album. Right Here Waiting, a cover of the Richard Marks classic, Every Time You Go Away, Sorry Seems to Be the Hardest Word, an Elton John song. Yeah. Good stuff. And we have one that is uh, decidedly not a critical darling from what I've seen. AJR, OK Orchestra. Hey, I like it, OK? What are you going to do about it? I'll fight you. Okay, no, I won't. To each his own, right? Life's too short to be a music snob. And then we have um, an artist from the German version of the Idol franchise, Alexander. And his last name escapes me, but this is just, he would just build himself as Alexander. Uh, this is his debut album, Take, a, Take Your Chance. A lot of the international idols, I will admit, are very much pop, very cookie cutter or generic sounding pop music. What can you do? And kind of like with the amount of American Idol CDs I have, I kind of want to keep most, well, a lot of the international idols. I'm thinking of doing a one or two videos of my favorite idols, uh, American as well as international. So you may see that at some point. <clears throat> and then we're getting into uh, one of the handful of full discographies I have full studio album discographies at least, All American Rejects. So this is their debut self-titled album. And uh, this one I should probably have in my DVD shelf because it is a DVD even though it's housed in a CD case. This is live from Oklahoma. This is a concert they did in, it did in uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma, I believe, um, derived from the material from their first album. And then their sophomore album, Move Along, the title track, and... Uh, What's the other one? Um, it ends tonight. That's another really good, a good ballad on that album. Then their third album, their third and fourth albums here, I picked up in Oklahoma. I'm, I'm glad I did. Um, when the world comes down, this is their third album, and their fourth and most recent album, Kids in the Street. Yes, I, I like their first two albums. I think I'd had their third album a long time ago. Got rid of it and. I, did, I wanted it again, and I'm glad I picked up that one and Kids in the Street again. Very good stuff. And uh, you, are, you are going to continue to see American Idols pop, in, pop up in my collection. Chris Allen, his debut, as well as his sophomore album, Thank You, Camellia. Yes, Chris Allen is probably one of those that I shouldn't like just because he sounds so... He sounds so white. And yes, American, one of American Idol's criticisms lately has been the white guy with the guitar wins. And he was one of the white guys with the guitar that I have to say is pretty bland. But honestly, watching him week in and week out on the show kind of, you know, endeared me to him to a degree. So what can you do? Then we have a CD that this was not in my sister's collection, but I got this because of my sister's. Uh, the C CD collection that I inherited from my sister, America, the complete greatest hits, another a great um, pop country band, kind of like the Eagles. Great, great stuff from these guys. If you have not checked out America, this is a great place to start. Uh, you could probably stream this album somewhere. But uh, yeah, this has their 70s stuff, their very Eagles-ish sounding stuff, as well as some of their 80s stuff like You Can Do Magic, uh, one of their great uh, 80s hits. And then this one is one one of the oddball ones from a, uh, a bargain bag recently, American Ambulance. You heard me talk about them. Uh, one of the last track on this six-song EP is Hey, John Ashcroft. I guess they, they did a little political uh, dabbling in sociopolitical commentary on here. But they also do a really cool cover of Elvis Costello's What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding. Very good. It's kind of a subdued cover as opposed to the more upbeat. Really interesting. Then we have American Authors with their 
debut album, Oh What a Life. And it's another band that I have their complete discography, their sophomore album, uh, What We Live For. You'll notice that I sometimes forget the titles of these albums and I have to look at the cover. And their most recent album, Seasons. Uh, this is my least favorite of theirs so far, but uh, I'm hanging on to it. And I think they have another album coming out later this year. So we'll, we'll see if they can bounce back bounce back from what I thought of their third album. And then we have another 90s, yeah, another 90s uh, musician, singer, Tori Amos, singer-songwriter. Very good stuff. This is her debut, Little Earthquakes. And I also have her sophomore album, Under the Pink. She's a little weird. Not quite as weird as Bjork or Yoko Ono, but still. Good stuff. And then uh, perhaps the most recent one that I have, uh, that I've come across yet here, Anderson Pack with his album Ventura. Excellent stuff. And yes, he is filed under A and not P because, um, I mean, you'll notice that the artists who go by their names, I'm filing them here under their last name, which is the correct way to do it. Uh, but Anderson Pack, his actual last name is Anderson. So that's kind of a loophole for why he gets filed under A. So there's, a there's a madness to my method. Anyway, from one of the more recent things in my collection to probably the oldest thing in my collection that I've shown you thus far, the Andrews Sisters. Yes, this is one of those close harmony girl groups from the 40s. I love that kind of sound, and uh, although for some reason, as much as I love it, I don't have a lot of it in my collection. But these ladies are just absolute stars from their era of music. I love their stuff. and But that's the only CD I have of theirs, so go figure. Take I Love Their Stuff for what you will, if I only have one of their CDs. And then we have another easy listening singer, song, uh, singer Paul Anka. Now, these two albums, Rock Swings and its follow-up, Classics My Way, these are, he takes um, contemporary so pop songs, you know, from the 80s, maybe some 70s also, 80s, 90s, uh, and 2000s songs, and uh, gives them the easy listening treatment. It's a little weird, a little funny. But, uh, and, and I don't know, some of them might be meant to be not taken seriously, but uh, he's a good singer. He's got a great voice, and uh, he does what he can with these songs, and most of the time he does not make them sound cheesy. He's got It's My Life, the Bon Jovi song on here, uh, Eye of the Tiger, the Survivor song from the Rocky movies, uh, Wonderwall, Black Hole Sun, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yes, he covers Smells Like Teen Spirit on here. And so, yeah. Eyes Without a Face, the Billy Idol song. These are these albums are experiences. Let's put it that way. They're they're kind of worth listening to, if only for the curiosity factor. Uh, this one he actually does uh, the Killers, Mr. Brightside, uh, Ordinary World by Duran Duran, and he also has uh, Michael Bublé and John Bon Jovi guest star on this album. So. Uh, he does uh, both sides now, the Joni Mitchell song. So yeah, on this album, he kind of delves back and reaches back into the 60s and 70s. And uh, so, yeah, some interesting stuff. What can I say? And uh, yeah, I'm going probably more quickly than I need to with this. I'm only into 23 and a half minutes. So I, I, I think I'm going at a pretty good pace, shall we say. If I want to cover 90 CDs in a video, I should go at a pretty good pace. Next up, we have one. I, I mentioned him in my 2000s albums countdown. Um, this is Steve Appleton. He's a guy, and this CD, actually, this is his debut album. I was at Ami Amoeba Music in Hollywood and with a friend of mine from San Diego, and I was going through, you just kind of walking through the racks, and I saw this one in the front of the A's, of course, and I just it just looked kind of curious to me. He, he looked like a kind of a good-looking guy. What can I say? I'm not going to lie. And so I just kind of picked it up, looked at the track listing, and thought, oh, what the heck? And it was only $5, and it was a Japanese import, uh, as you can see here on the uh, promo sticker. And it still has the OB strip on it. And so $5 for a used Japanese import CD is a darn good price. So I picked it up, and I just kind of fell in love with this guy's music. It's uh, on the pop side of singer-songwriter stuff. He wrote performed and produced this album entirely himself. So it, it's not manufactured pop. Uh, so, but yeah, well, it sounds like manufactured pop, but he did it all himself. So good stuff, fun, catchy tunes. Check out Steve Appleton. I don't know if his stuff is on streaming or not, 
but uh, I liked him so much that later on I picked up his uh, this EP, the Sunshine EP. It's got uh, uh, mostly remixes. It's got a few new songs, but mostly remixes. And this, I believe, also is, yeah, it's also a Japanese import. And as we switch over to the next rack, pardon me for one second. The joys of live streams, the awkward moments, the awkward pauses, such as for getting drinks of water, drink of water. <clears throat> hey, Noah, how's it going? And uh, still going on Steve Appleton, his sophomore album, Colors. Uh, not only is the music good on this uh, on this album, just as good as his previous albums, but I love the cover, don't you? The light kind of washes out the colors uh, a little bit, but uh, yeah, very nice, uh, nice cover and a good album. Yeah, and again, Japanese import. And uh, moving on to, um, I mentioned Duran Duran. Oh yeah, uh, what's his name? Paul Anka does a Duran Duran cover. This is a Duran Duran spinoff group called Arcadia, and this is their their one and only album, So Red the Rose. And this is actually, I found this, this is a hard to find CD. This is probably one of the most valuable CDs in my collection, but it's a uh, two CDs and one DVD. Uh, yes, the original album, an album of B-sides and remixes and rarities, and DVD. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, and I actually found this, I did I tell the story? I think I might have told a story in a video was it last year or the year before? I found it at FYE, I think it was, for like $27. And it was going on uh, Discogs for upwards of 80 bucks. And so, yes, and it, this, the discs were in good condition, so I flipped it. And I got like uh, two and a half to three times what I originally paid for it. So I don't do that often. But when I see the opportunity, I'm going to do it. Gosh darn it. So... Yes, despite my rants that I can sometimes have against capitalism, I can be as guilty as uh, some other people. So, anyway, uh, stepping back into the American Idol thingamajig, David Archuleta. He was he was in the first year of American Idol that I really enjoyed, that I watched from beginning to end. So I had a soft spot for this kid from the beginning. Uh, sophomore album, The Upside of Down, the deluxe version, of course, with the DVD. And his next album, when he moved on to an independent label, uh, Begin. That's a very nice album as well. It's got uh, several covers on here, but a few original original songs as well. Everybody Hurts, the uh, cover of the R.E.M. song. Somewhere Only We Know, a cover of the Keen song. He does a great job on these covers. I mean, it's David Archuleta. I mean, come on. And then uh, the only other album of his that I have is No Matter How Far. And this is kind of... Uh, this is mostly a... New, a new studio album, but it has a couple of B-sides that were on other import editions of other albums. So it's kind of a hybrid new studio album with uh, B-sides and rarities sort of thing. The, he has, what, two other full-length albums that I don't have yet, and I'm very strongly considering picking them up. And then back to the old school stuff, Louis Armstrong. Yeah. And some would argue this goes into the jazz section, but um, he has... I. Yeah, more vocals on here than instrumentals, so that's the reason why I have it in my in my vocals section. Louis Armstrong. I mean, nobody compares to Louis Armstrong. Come on. Then we have an international idol that probably nobody watching this video has ever heard of. Koop Arponen, I think is how you pronounce it, he, and he was from Finland. He was one of the winners of the Finland version of Idol. A very good album. And this one takes a little bit of explanation. Uh, this is Maria Arredondo. She is a pop, um, pop R&B singer from Norway. And the reason I got this album, this I think is her sophomore album. She has a duet with an absolute favorite Norwegian singer of mine of all time, Espen Lind. And it is one of the greatest songs I've ever heard in my life. The song is called Remedy. I don't know if you can stream it anywhere, but it's so, so catchy. One of the catchiest, earwor most earwormy songs you will ever hear. Remedy by Maria Arredondo and Espen Lind. And this CD, again, is... You would not expect such an obscure CD to be somewhat valuable. But yeah, I've looked on uh, Discogs, and it's uh, not quite as, as uh, pricey as the uh, Arcadia CD, but you'd be surprised, maybe. But I'm not giving this one up. I'm keeping it. Then we have one of the best album covers I have ever seen, I think. Don't you love that? 
yes, it's a tomato. Shout out to Bleachers. Uh, but yes, a tomato with a toothy grin on it. I, I just, I love this album cover. This is Ben Arthur. He's a uh, singer-songwriter, American singer-songwriter. And this is his album, Edible Darling. And one of my favorite uh, obscure pop albums of all time, uh, Broken Hearted Smile. He has just a little bit of a country-ish sound to him. So maybe a little bit of a folk, uh, indie folk pop is, I guess, kind of the lane that he travels in. But yes, a singer-songwriter, wrote all the stuff himself. One of my favorite songs is uh, Keep Me Around. It's a very kind of a darkly humorous song. It's, it's a little bit morbid, but it's hilarious. I mean, if you just read the lyrics for Keep Me Around by Ben Arthur, great song. But yes, this is one of my favorite. It's one of my the favorite albums of mine that I forget is there, you know, like when I make lists and stuff. But I love that album. Then we have a British or a UK rock group, uh, kind of like a, a Britpop sort of a sound, Ash. And this is the only album of theirs that I still own. I owned a few previously, but they just didn't, they don't hold a candle to this one. Free All Angels, it's a fantastic album. Nearly every song on here is excellent. A couple of them have kind of gone on to have uh, lives of their own, like uh, Shining Light, um, Annie Lennox covered it on her um, Greatest Hits collection several years ago. So, uh, and uh, Burn Baby Burn, uh, Walking Barefoot. There's there's another group or another artist that I can't, uh, can't remember who it is that does a song called Walking Barefoot. That's not this song, it's different. Um, but yeah, Candy is another good song. Some of the songs have samples of, uh, you know, violence and stuff and, you know, mixed into the stuff. So. It's, it's not overwhelming with samples and that kind of stuff. It's still very much a rock album, but it's a great, great album. Fantastic. And this one, this one has a bit of a story behind it. Do I have time to tell the story? Maybe. Uh, the Association. This is their two-disc anthology. It originally came in a chubby two-disc case, but uh, I shrunk it down. When I was hurting for space, I shrunk it down, as I have a lot of my chubby uh, CDs down to a single-width case, and I took the the front cover of the other side of the chubby thing, cut it down to fit in here, and I've got the booklet because it's too fat to fit in the case. I've got the booklet stored somewhere else. So that's that's uh, one of the weird quirks about my collecting, my CD collection, that you probably didn't care about knowing, but now you know it. Uh, but yes, the association, Terry Kirkman, one of the founding members of the association, uh, lived down the street and went to high school with my mother. How's that for a lame claim to fame? Well, maybe not so lame, because these guys sound good. And uh, my mom went to her uh, her 50th high school class reunion. Sorry, mom, to stamp your age on your forehead like that. But uh, uh, Terry Kirkman was one of the guys who organized it. And I said, you think you could take the booklet from this uh, CD with you and maybe he could autograph it? And he did. So so I've got the per a personally autographed booklet for this uh, CD. So, yay. And then we have a CD that I think uh, my man Noah sent me, or I, either he sent it to me or he sold it to me, Rick Astley. And and yes, if he sold it, he may have sold it to me because yes, I would pay money for Rick Astley. Not a lot of money, but just, just I'm, I'm glad that Noah didn't Rick roll me when he sent me the CD. But hey, it's yes, and yes, it's got his uh, Never Gonna Give You Up, but it's also, um, it's also got Together Forever, which is an underrated, you know, um, Never going to give you up gets all the attention, but Together Forever is a very is an underrated and forgotten Rick Astley song. Good song. Then we have another of the rather unknown, or mostly unknown rock groups in my collection, Athenaeum. These guys, I think these guys are from Georgia, if I'm remembering correctly, but it's uh, very much of a rock sound, bordering on hard rock, but not quite hard rock. But uh, yeah, some some great. Um, Post grunge, I guess maybe maybe they'd fit into the post grunge category, but yes, what I didn't know was their most successful single in the states, and at that it really wasn't very successful. Unfortunately and unjustly, these guys didn't make it uh, in the states. They only put out two albums, but um, unnoticed is another good song on here, and so long. So yeah, if you like rock, give Athenaeum a try. I like them so much that I also have their sophomore album, self-titled. Yes, their debut album is called Radiance. And yes, I also have their sophomore album, self-titled. Uh, Suddenly, Comfort, and uh, uh, Damage is another 
because I'm frozen in time. So yeah, here I am naming almost half the track listing on both of these albums. It's that good, trust me. And then we have another one that I had never heard of, even though she's on a major label. This was put out on Columbia, I think. Uh, I found it at Epic Seconds uh, a couple of years ago. Nicole Atkins. And I just picked it up on a whim and re actually rather liked it. Uh, this is her album, Neptune City. I think it's her debut album. I could be wrong. But uh, yes, singer-songwriter rock. She reminds me a little bit of Sarah Bareilles, KT Tunstall, somewhere in that realm. You know, rock-ish female singer-songwriters. Pretty good. If memory serves, and I'm, and I'm not confusing her with somebody else. And then we have another CD I picked up in Oklahoma, Atomic Tom. I had to have it because of their name. And uh, yeah, good stuff on here. Um, Take Me Out is the their hit single, kind of like Athenaeum. It wasn't a huge hit, but uh, that was a good one. And uh, Maybe I'm Wrong is another really, really good uh, song off here. Uh, another Yet another, another CD that I had had long ago, got rid of, and I'm very glad that I picked up it again. <clears throat> Yes, we're going at a very good pace. This will be less than an hour, and yeah, I'm doing. I think I'm doing good. Are you guys enjoying it so far? I hope so. Here we have uh, one of the CDs in a uh, collection of, excuse me, series of greatest hits compilation albums that I have. You might understand as I go on. Uh, the average white band. This is in the the definitive collection series. Um, the covers kind of had to say the same scheme with the same font and stuff. And they're all, they're both two discs. They're all two discs. You'll see several of these in my collection, but yes, the, uh, the average white band, you, they sound completely American, completely, completely funk based, but they were actually a Scottish band. Go figure. That was one thing that just fascinated me. And I didn't know it obviously until after I listened to their stuff. My sister liked these guys and there was, she had a one disc uh, hits collection of theirs, but I liked it so much that I, uh, went on the hunt for their two, this two-disc set and really enjoyed it. <clears throat> and then from uh, 70s Funk, we go into 2010's uh, EDM, because why not? We have Avicii with his album, True. Uh, I picked up Stories as well, liked it, but it kind of cooled off on me um, faster than I expected, and I eventually uh, let it go. But this is the Japanese edition. Um, I have quite a number of Japanese CDs. I think I have probably a hundred Japanese edition CDs in my collection now. I've I stopped counting for a while, but yes, this has like five bonus tracks uh, compared to the American edition. So you can see there. So very much worth the uh, extra few bucks it costs for the Japanese version. And then we have uh, yet another idol. This uh, is actually a Canadian idol. So any of you Canadian viewers out there might recognize the name, Ava. Is it Eva Avila or Eva Avila? I'm not sure how you pronounce the name because I didn't. I've owned these CDs for years and I've never done my research, but uh, this is her debut album somewhere else and got her sophomore album, Give Me the Music. She's kind of uh, R&B pop, sort of very good stuff. Uh, I, I really like her. And uh, yeah. one of these days I have to do my a countdown of my favorite American idols and my favorite world idols not counting American Idols. So, but yeah, she was one of the standouts, uh, which self-explanatory since I own two of her CDs. And then we have a group that you guys have probably heard of, the B-52s, with their album, Cosmic Thing. Uh, I, I love, despite how much I love this album, this is the only album of theirs that I own. I'm not sure why. It's just one of those artists that I've never gotten around to collecting, picking up more albums of. Because there's just so much more, there's just so much music out there, you know. What can I say? Then we have a, a back to another, a lesser known group that uh, very few of you have probably heard of, Baby Animals. This was an Australian rock band that got its start back in the early '90s, yeah, 1991. <coughs> Excuse me. This is their debut album, self-titled, and they they remind me a lot of uh, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts, a little bit of Melissa Etheridge thrown in. But yeah, uh, Rush You and Painless and One Word are three of the great songs on here, three of the best songs on here, in my opinion. And they also put out uh, a sophomore album, Shaved and Dangerous, and uh, not nearly as good as their debut, but still good enough for me to hang on to good, solid, female-fronted rock. 
Then we have a, another CD from a bargain bag from last year, uh, Baby Lemonade with 68% uh, pure imagination. And I honestly for, forget exactly what these guys sounded like. If you feel like scouring my bargain bag videos last year for hours, you can find out. Hey, like I said, taking notes for videos where I go through 90 CDs, it would be a daunting task. Anyway, we have Tal Bachman. And as as I understand, I've done my research and it's not Bachman, it's actually pronounced Bachman. That's the correct pronunciation. If if Tal or any of the of any of the other Bachman slash Bachmans are watching, please correct me or, or verify that for me. I don't know. Anyway, Tal Bachman is the son of Randy Bachman from the Guess Who. This is his self-titled debut album. Great stuff. A little bit of post-grunge. Uh, kind of stuff, but you kind of, you know, the, the nice, thick, uh, crunchy guitars, but not quite going into the hard rock territory. And then his sophomore album, which is kind of hard to find because it was put out as an independent album or on an independent label, Staring Down the Sun, uh, almost as good. Actually, it, it pretty much is equally as good as his debut. Very, very good stuff. And here you'll find something that I sometimes do with when I have CD singles by an artist. I've taken them out of their standard uh oh, where's the other one the the uh, ben adams one you know the, the really really super thin um uh european import cd singles that come in those cases you've probably seen them in the stores here and there in the used sections uh i take those if i have more than one i take them and make my own covers for them and put them into a two-sided regular uh, thickness jewel case and i make my own inserts inserts i got the track listings on here and yes, got the one disc here and the other disc over here. I do keep the original inserts in case I ever decide to get rid of the CD, the singles, which has happened a couple of times, but the vast majority of them I've hung on to. One of the funny, whimsical ways in which I personalize or customize my CD collection. And now we're getting into uh, another artist whose full discography I have. So. Sit back, relax, and enjoy Backstreet Boys. This is their the European uh, debut album. Yes, the debut album we got here in the States was uh, not their actual debut album. It was, a, it was a combination of their European debut album and sophomore album, Backstreet's Back. And then we move on into the... This is where they got into, you know, one album for the entire world, uh, Millennium. Still, the be their Backstreet Boys at their best, in my opinion, is this one right here. And we've got Black and Blue, which I actually have in uh, some of the CDs you will notice later on. I had, I have tinted CD cases that uh, I put transplanted some of the CDs into. A blue one, of course, for Black and Blue. And we have Never Gone, which was hmm, the, the red-headed stepchild of uh, the Backstreet Boys albums, probably the, the least critically acclaimed but I still love it. And then Unbreakable, which was a great comeback from Never Gone in Black and Blue, their best album since Millennium, if you haven't heard it yet. And then onward we go into This Is Us. Can you tell I like the Backstreet Boys? And uh, In a World Like This. And then their most recent album, DNA. What can I say? You know, Backstreet Boys, I kind of have a soft spot for them. They are a not so guilty pleasure. Then we have Anita Baker, one of the underrated R&B soul singers of the 90s, 80s and 90s. Yeah, a great kind of a, a sultry, smoky sort of a voice. I don't think she smoked, but, you know, it's one of those nice deep voices for a, a female singer. Great, great songs. I got this one, and I actually just picked up, but I haven't listened to it yet. That's why it's not in here. Her debut album, or was it her debut? Rapture, the one before this one. Great, great song. Oh, I'm, I guess I should note some of the famous songs on here. Um, Giving You the Best That I Got, that's the tri title track. That's what this album is. And uh, Just Because is another one of her big hits. So, good stuff. And then we have, um, this guy is from a band that you will see in next week's, maybe, uh, or uh, the next episode, or maybe the episode after. Uh, Alex Band, he is from the rock group The Calling, one of the two main members of that band. Uh, <clears throat> this one is this, this is his solo album. I think his one and only solo album so far. But uh, yeah, 
Very good stuff. Found that one at um, Everyday Music up in Portland uh, last year, I think. Then we have The Essential Bangles. I have one or two of their albums on LP, but this is their greatest hits collection. I just, I just I wanted to have the hits. You know, you want to have the hits sometimes, you know, and especially when not all the songs you really love are on that one studio album that you have. So. And then we're getting into, and we will conclude halfway through this discography uh, because I, I, I want to keep myself to 90 CDs in each video. Sarah Bareilles, gotta love her. She has a surprising following. Uh, a review of her albums that I did a couple of years ago is it might actually still be the highest rated or the highest viewed, most viewed video on my channel. It's just kind of a, it's just kind of a strangely random sort of one uh, for for it to be my highest viewed video. I, I'm not sure why, but that shows you the following that she has, and justifiably so because she's awesome. But yes, this is her debut album, Little Voice, Little Voice, Little Voice. And yes, it's probably a good thing I'm coming up to the end of the video, huh? And her sophomore album, Kaleidoscope Heart, The Blessed Unrest, her third album, and yes. There's at least one song on every single one of the, uh, these albums that I love. On the Kaleidoscope Heart, it is uh, King of Anything. I love that one. And, of course, Brave off of The Blessed Unrest. I absolutely love. I dearly adore that song. And the last of the 90 CDs I'm showing you here in this video is Amidst the Chaos, her most recent, most recent studio album by Sarah Bareilles. Gotta love. You gotta love her. She, she gets better with every album, I think. Yeah, she has an album that is from that uh, Broadway show that he, she just did, you know, songs from that Broadway show. I do not have that album. Um, don't know why. I just haven't picked it up yet, partly because I haven't seen the show. But anyway, yes, that is two full racks like this of my CD collection. So, um, yes, uh, before I go, uh, before you guys sign off, there's a couple things I wanted to mention at the beginning. And hopefully you're still here sticking around. I wanted to um, ask you guys, maybe give a little poll. I'll probably give the same poll on Twitter as well. But um, my idea is to do my rock pop vocals CDs all in consecutive videos, then move on to, well, then do the instrumental videos, then move on to the fringe areas like soundtracks and holiday CDs and stuff. But I'm kind of wondering, would you guys like to see me intersperse the holiday CDs or the soundtrack CDs, or the uh, comedy and spoken word, even though that's not music, I'm still going to do those. Would you like me to, to intersperse those in between the A to Z, the main A to Z categories, just to kind of break it up, to, you know, break it up and give a little interest and stuff? Or would you like me to leave those until I'm all done with those? Let me know uh, in, the, in the comment section below. Uh, I would like to, yeah. It could be fun to just break it up with those categories, because the my holiday CDs and my comedy and spoken word are definitely going to be they're small enough that they would each be in their own video. I think I only have about 90 of each of those. Uh, soundtracks might take up two videos, but anyway. Let me know. Oh, and compilations. Compilations are going to take up two videos as well. So, uh, But anyway, I, I don't want to intersperse my A to Z instrumental stuff in between my A to Z to these, because that's going to be multiple videos as well, and it'll probably just get confusing. But anyway... Uh, let me know. Uh, thank you, Maddie, for your comment. Uh, yes, I, my yeah, I guess my collection to some people would probably be enviable. It's uh, sometimes can be a little bit overwhelming, and it's a little it bugs me a little bit that I have so many CDs that, and of course you know, I you how could you ever have time to listen to them all? Though in some ways I feel like I'm hoarding music. I don't know, and that, that's just me. That's just my my neurotic self. But anyway. That will do it for my CD collection, chapter one of who knows how many. And I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed it, and I'm going to enjoy doing this series uh, as we go here. And yet, I don't know, oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. I don't know how often I'm going to do these. Um, I had so much fun doing this one, I might do three or four of them a month. I thought, I was thinking of only doing them like two per month. You know, that way it would, it would hopefully be done in less than two years. 
<laughs> yes, this is going to take a while, people. But that's the beauty of YouTube is they're going to be on there. So you can, if you come in in the middle of it, you can watch the previous videos and catch up. But uh, yeah, uh, and I, yeah, I might do these more than twice a month. Uh, it kind of depends on how much time I have. And of course, whether I'm in the mood, I don't want to plod through them like this because I don't want to look like I'm not enjoying myself. So anyway. I am rambling, so I will close out this video for today. That'll do it for chapter one of my CD collection, A to Z. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video or go live. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob. See ya!